Welcome back to CS11. This is lecture 16b, where we'll continue our discussion of the Caesar Cipher sample program. Starting here at the Wikipedia webpage for the Caesar Cipher, which is quite good, and I recommend that you take a look if you're at all interested in learning more about the history of the Caesar Cipher, named after Julius Caesar. The idea with the Caesar Cipher is that you have a fixed shift, for example, by one or three or some other number and that every letter in your message is shifted by that amount. So, for example, if we were using a shift of 1, then an A would become a B, and a B would become a C, and so on, up to Z, which would wrap around and become an A. So there's a shift of 1. If we were using a shift of 2, then an A becomes a C, and a B becomes a D, and so on, up to uh, a Y, which would become an A and a Z, which would become a B. And so you can do a fixed shift with um, every amount. This is one of the um, earliest types of uh, ciphers out there and is the basis for a more complicated cipher, which we'll worry about in an upcoming assignment known as a Visionaire cipher. In this cipher, the shift changes from one letter to another in some repeating pattern. So, for example, maybe you shift the first letter by one, the second letter by two, third letter by three, and so on, then back to one in some kind of repeating. But in the simpler Caesar cipher, we pick one shift and then use it for the in entire message. Okay, well, with that in mind, let's take a look at the code for the Caesar cipher program starting with the class definition and we see that we have one, two, three, four, five functions and one integer variable. So let's talk about the design of the class. Okay, so we've got a constructor that takes an integer and we have a function called encrypt and decrypt and simplify and then we have a function called shift and an integer called shift amount. When I think about objects, I often like to draw them as boxes with the public portions sticking out. So here these are the public portions and these are the private portions. And the public portions are accessible to someone who's using the class and the private portions are only uh, accessible by the public functions. So these functions here can access the shift function and this shift amount variable, but if I'm out here using the function, I can only get to these. Well, why would we want some functions to be public and some to be private, as in the case here? And the answer is, we want to think about someone who's using this class, what are they going to want to be able to do? And we have the constructor public so that they can create one of these objects and initialize it, and they're going to want to be able to encrypt and decrypt messages. So those need to be public. And we'll come back and talk about the simplify function in a moment. Now, the key to encrypting and decrypting messages is the shift function, which takes a letter and shifts it in a particular pattern based on the shift amount variable, which is set up by the constructor. So that shifts letter by letter. But someone who's using the function, using this class, doesn't need to do that. They just want to say, here's my string, encrypt it, give me back the results. And the details of how that happens isn't important to someone who's using this class. And so the encrypt and decrypt functions can make use of the shift function to go through and shift the various letters of the messages. And so the shift function here is a good example of a function that can be private. And the only functions that we want to make public 
are the ones that we know the user is going to need to call. And so functions that are there to help other functions do their work can be private as well as our, our variables. Okay, let's take a look at the various functions, starting with the constructor, which is quite simple. It takes a parameter here called shift amount and sets our member variable shift amount to be that value. So that's going to allow you to set up a Caesar cipher that works with any fixed shift amount, such as one or two or three and so on. The two main functions that the user is going to be most interested in calling are going to be the encrypt and decrypt functions. And both of them allow someone, the user, to pass in a string and then return a string result, which is either going to be the encrypted message or the decrypted message. And if you look at the code for these two functions, you'll notice that they're basically the same, except that the encrypt function is going to be adding the shift amount and the decrypt function is going to subtract it. So, for example, if you were encoding with a value of 1 and you were encrypting the message, that adds 1 and A becomes B. But if you were decrypting, you'd subtract 1, which turns a B back into an A. So those are the encrypt and decrypt functions. Both the encrypt and decrypt functions depend on the shift function and the shift function is called on each letter of the string. So let's take a look at this one. So here, int result equals C minus capital A plus shift amount. So what the heck is going on here? Well, in C and C++, characters and integers have the same type. So if I create a character variable, char c equals 65, and then c out c, that will print out a capital A. And that's because 65 is the ASCII code for a capital A. A B is 66, and so on. So this means that characters and integers are interchangeable, and that means that we can also do arithmetic. So for example, if I say char c equals a, c out c plus 1, and line, that will output a capital B. Now, if you have a z, and add 1, that doesn't give you an A. That gives you the next character in the ASCII chart. And as an exercise, you could look up and see what that is. All right, so if we want to wrap around the alphabet so that you can add 1 to Z and get an A, or subtract 1 from A to get a Z, that will have to handle with our own logic. Okay, so knowing that, let's take a look back at this function. This function called shift gets a character called C, returns a character, and gets a shift amount. And the idea is that this function is going to take that character and shift it by this amount, and then wrap around, if we go past Z, that will wrap around back to A, or if we decrement past below A, that will wrap back around to Z. So here, result equals C minus A plus shift amount. Okay, so here we're taking advantage of a trick. If I have a character called C that's equal to an A, and I subtract an A from that, A minus A, A is 65, A is 65, and 65 minus 65 is zero. So notice here that I'm subtracting a capital A, and then I'm adding it back in. And that's because in ASCII, an A is 65, a B is 66, and so on, up to Z. But to make the arithmetic work, it's much easier for me to temporarily pretend that A is 0, B is 1, 
c is 2, and so on, and z up to 25. So what this code does is it temporarily shifts this range of values into this range. And then I can add and subtract my values, and then check to see if I've gone less than 0 or to 26 or greater. Then, once I've converted the letters, I can add the 65 back in to get back to A65, B66, and so on. And so, at the end, this adds that value back in. So the effect of this is to take the shift values so the effect of this is to take a character in, apply the shift value, and send a character back out. The last key function is this one here called simplify. To keep things simple on our encryption and decryption, we've, I've decided that we're only going to work with capital letters A through Z. No spaces, no punctuation, no lowercase letters, and so on. So the input string, we want to convert to only uppercase letters. Now, there's two basic ways that we could approach this problem. And one would be to start with the whole string and take out all the parts that we don't want the other approach would be to start with an empty string and only add in the parts that we want to keep. That's what I've done here. So in this function, we take in a string called text, and we're going to return a string. And the string that we're returning is this string here called simplified. The simplified string is initially blank, and then we iterate through each of the characters in the parameter string called text. And here, I'll use a function from the CC type library called isAlpha, which when applied on a character, tells you, is that an alphabet character, A through Z. So, if the ith character from the input string is a letter, then I convert it to an uppercase letter using another command from cc type to upper and then I append it to the simplified string. So if the input string the parameter was hello there and I iterate through here I'll see H that's a letter so capital H E L L O, space, is not a letter, so I ignore it, T, H, E, R, and E. And so, in this process, I convert a string that could be mixed case with spaces and punctuation into a string that's only uppercase letters. And, when you put all of these functions together, we can then have a working Caesar cipher, like I demonstrated in the last video. Okay, well, that wraps up our tour of the Caesar cipher program.